Hi, everybody. Welcome to the National Press Theater for uh, this conference of press. Avec, uh, on commence par des déclarations. D'abord, le ministre Champagne, ensuite le ministre Haidou, ensuite le ministre Haidou, et ensuite le Tam. Merci, uh, merci d'abord à vous d'être avec nous ce matin. Thank you for being with us here this morning. Comme nous l'avons annoncé hier en fin d'après-midi, le gouvernement du Canada a sécurisé les services d'un avion pour rapatrier les Canadiens qui se trouvent à bord du Grand Princess, qui doit arriver plus tard aujourd'hui dans le port d'Oakland, en Californie. Cette décision a été prise à la suite de la demande du gouvernement des États-Unis de rapatrier les ressortissants étrangers à bord de ce navire où s'est déclaré une éclosion du COVID-19. COVID Nous avons travaillé en étroite collaboration avec nos partenaires américains afin d'assurer le retour au pays de nos Canadiens et de nos Canadiennes le plus rapidement possible et évidemment de façon sécuritaire. L'aéronef transportera les passagers de Auckland jusqu'à la base des Forces canadiennes à Trenton, où ces derniers seront ensuite évalués et soumis à une quarantaine de 14 jours. Les passagers feront l'objet d'un dépistage des symptômes avant de montrer à bord de l'appareil. S'ils présentent des symptômes, ils ne seront pas autorisés à monter à bord et feront plutôt l'objet d'une évaluation plus approfondie afin de déterminer les prochaines étapes. Cette démarche illustre l'engagement et la mobilisation du gouvernement du Canada face à la crise du COVID-19, ainsi que notre étroite collaboration avec le gouvernement américain pour limiter la propagation du virus en Amérique du Nord. Je souhaite d'ailleurs profiter de l'occasion d'aujourd'hui pour encore une fois remercier tous les partenaires et les fonctionnaires, dont ceux de nos consulats à San Francisco et Los Angeles, pour leur travail des derniers jours afin d'appuyer le rapatriement des Canadiens qui se trouvent à bord du Grand Princess. En terminant, j'insiste pour rappeler à tous les Canadiens et les Canadiennes qui nous regardent aujourd'hui et qui envisagent un déplacement de l'importance de prendre le temps de consulter nos avis aux voyageurs et de s'enregistrer auprès du service d'inscription des Canadiens à l'étranger afin de recevoir les dernières mises à jour du gouvernement du Canada concernant le COVID-19, la santé et la sécurité des Canadiens et des Canadiennes, tant au pays qu'à l'étranger, demeure notre priorité numéro un. So as we announced late yesterday afternoon, the government of Canada has secured the services of a plane to repatriate Canadians on board the Grand Princess, which will dock later today in the port of Oakland in California. This decision was made following a request from the government of the United States to repatriate foreign nationals aboard this ship, which has experienced an outbreak of COVID-19. We have been working in close collaboration with our American partners to ensure the return of our Canadians as quickly and as safely as possible. The aircraft will transport passengers from Oakland to Canadian Forces Base Trenton, where they will be assessed and quarantined for 14 days. Passengers will be screened for symptoms before boarding the aircraft. If they exhibit symptoms, they will not be allowed to board and will instead be assessed further to determine next steps. This illustrates the commitment and mobilization of the Government of Canada in the face of COVID-19 crisis, as well as our close collaboration with the U.S. government to limit the spread of the virus in North America. I would also like to take this opportunity once again to thank officials and partners, including those from our consulates in San Francisco and Los Angeles, for their work over the past few days to support the repatriation of Canadians aboard the Grand Princess. In closing, I would like to remind all Canadians which are watching us today and who are considering traveling of the importance of taking the time to consult our travel advisories, and to register with the Registration of Canadians Abroad Service in order to receive the very latest updates from the Government of Canada regarding COVID-19. The health and safety of Canadians, both at home and abroad, remains our priority.
Thank you, Minister. Bonjour à tous. Merci d'être avec nous. Le plan présenté par la ministre Champagne va nous assurer que les mesures nécessaires soient en place pour contenir le virus. Nous avons pris cette décision pour protéger tous les Canadiens. As with our previous repatriations, passengers will be screened for symptoms before boarding the plane. If they exhibit symptoms of COVID-19, they will not be permitted to board. They will be cared for by the U.S. health care system, and our consular services will remain in close contact throughout the duration of their illness. All returning Canadians will continue to be assessed for symptoms of COVID-19 through a 14-day quarantine at CFP. Be Trenton out of an abundance of caution and to ensure the health and safety of all Canadians. Each repatriated Canadian or family will be housed in separate accommodations to reduce potential exposure to other quarantined individuals. And if quarantined individuals remain asymptomatic throughout the 14 day quarantine period, they pose no risk to others and they will be able to return home. We will monitor their health and we will make their stay as comfortable as possible. I'd like to thank the Canadian Armed Forces at CFB Trenton, the staff of the Health Portfolio, the province of Ontario, our partners helping on the ground, as well as our Chief Public Health Officer, Dr. Tam, for all of their hard work and dedication. And I now like to invite Dr. Tam to say a few words on the public health assessment of cruises. Thank you, Ministers, and good morning, everyone. As usual, I'll begin with a brief update on the evolving situation globally and cases in Canada. Globally, there are now over 110,000 confirmed cases in over 100 countries. In Canada, as of right now, we have 71 confirmed and presumptive cases of COVID-19 reported nationally, including 34 in Ontario, 27 in British Columbia, four in Quebec, and six in Alberta. Most of Canada's cases include travelers from an affected area or their close contacts. In addition, colleagues in British Columbia have identified two cases of COVID-19 in residents of a long-term care facility as part of their investigation into an individual who contracted COVID-19 in the community. New cases in Canada also include six individuals connected to the first leg of the Grand Princess cruise ship voyage who were on board between February 11th and the 21st. Given that cases of COVID-19 have now been identified amongst passengers currently on board the Grand Princess, any asymptomatic individuals repatriated to Canada will be quarantined for 14 days. We are also aware of a Canadian with COVID-19 in the Dominican Republic. This individual was a guest at a hotel where one other case linked to Italy had previously been reported. As a result, we have identified travelers who stayed at the same hotel from February the 22nd to March the 7th and have asked them to self-isolate for 14 days as a precautionary measure. I've asked Canadians to think twice about going on cruise ships. Today, the Public Health Agency of Canada is recommending that Canadians avoid all cruise ship travel due to COVID-19. Cruise ships have passengers from around the world who may be arriving from areas with known or unknown spread of the novel coronavirus. The virus can spread quickly on board cruise ships due to the close contact between passengers. Older people and people with a weakened immune system or underlying medical conditions are at a higher risk of developing severe disease. Because of the ongoing expansion of COVID-19 outbreaks worldwide, for the time being, um, the risk to the general population within Canada is still low, but this could change rapidly. We are most concerned for Canada's vulnerable populations. It is very important for all travelers coming to Canada to self-monitor for symptoms of COVID-19 for 14 days and avoid places where you cannot easily separate yourself from others if you become ill. Stay home if you're sick and call ahead to health lines or public health authorities before seeking medical care. We must all do our part to reduce spread of COVID-19 and protect our most vulnerable groups, including anyone in long-term care facilities and our hospitals. As well, the risk of infection is increased for certain settings, such as travel to the most affected areas, international conferences, 
large gatherings in enclosed spaces. So we continue to work closely with health authorities internationally, across Canada, and at all levels of government to assess the risks and keep Canadians informed on what we can all do to keep healthy and protect the most vulnerable amongst us. Thank you. Merci au ministre, Dr. Tam, et Thank bonjour à tous. Comme l'habitude, nous commençons par faire le point sur l'évolution de la situation dans le monde et les cas au Canada. Dans le monde, plus de 110 000 cas de la maladie ont été confirmés dans plus de 100 pays. Au Canada, à l'heure actuelle, l'un des nombres 71 cas confirmés et présumés de COVID-19 à l'échelle nationale, soit 34 en Ontario, 27 en Colombie-Britannique, 4 au Québec et 6 en Alberta. Dans la plupart des cas, il s'agit de personnes qui ont voyagé dans l'une des régions touchées ou des personnes qui ont eu des contacts étroits avec elles. De plus, des collègues en Colombie-Britannique ont identifié deux cas de COVID-19 chez les résidents d'un établissement de soins de longue durée dans le cadre de leur enquête relative à une personne ayant contracté la maladie dans la communauté. Les nouveaux cas au Canada comprennent également six personnes qui se trouvent à bord du navire Grand Princess du 11 au 21 février lors de la première partie de la croisière. Comme des cas de COVID-19 ont été identifiés parmi les personnes qui se trouvent actuellement à bord du navire Grand Princess, toutes les personnes asymptomatiques qui seront répatriées au Canada seront mises en quarantaine pour une période de 14 jours. Nous savons également qu'une personne d'origine canadienne est atteinte de COVID-19 en République dominicaine. Cette personne séjournée à l'hôtel ou un autre cas L'ISE en Italie avait déjà été signalé. Nous avons donc identifié les voyageurs qui ont logé au même hôtel le 22 février au 7 mars et leur avons demandé de s'isoler pendant 14 jours par mesure de précaution. On demande aux Canadiens de bien y penser avant d'aller en croisière. Aujourd'hui, l'Agence de la santé publique du Canada recommande aux Canadiens d'éviter les croisières en raison de COVID-19. Les croisiéristes proviennent de partout dans le monde et pourraient arriver d'une région à bas ou lancer ou non que le nouveau coronavirus se propage. Ce dernier peut se propager rapidement à bord des navires de croisière en raison des contacts étroits entre les passagers. Les personnes âgées et les personnes dont le système immunitaire est affaibli ou qui présentent des problèmes de santé sous-jacents sont considérés comme étant plus à risque de maladies graves. Comme l'épidémie de COVID-19 continue de se répandre dans le monde, à l'heure actuelle, le risque au Canada pour la population générale est faible, mais la situation pourrait changer rapidement. Nous nous préoccupons surtout des populations vulnérables au Canada et on demande maintenant aux personnes qui présentent un risque accru d'exposition au COVID-19 de limiter les déplacements et d'éviter les foules. Il est important pour tous les voyageurs qui arrivent au Canada de surveiller les symptômes de COVID-19 pendant 14 jours et qu'ils évitent tout endroit où ils ne peuvent pas facilement s'isoler des autres s'ils deviennent malades. Restez à la maison si vous êtes malade et communiquez avec les lignes InfoSanté et les autorités de santé publique avant de consulter un médecin. Nous avons tous un rôle à jouer pour We éviter la propagation de COVID-19 et protéger les personnes les plus vulnérables de notre population, y compris celles qui sont hospitalisées ou qui résident dans les établissements de soins de longue durée. Par ailleurs, le risque d'infection well, est plus grand dans certains contextes, notamment les voyages dans les régions les plus touchées, les conférences areas, internationales international et les grands événements qui se tiennent dans les espaces clos. Nous continuons de travailler en étroite collaboration avec les autorités de la santé à l'échelle nationale et internationale, ainsi qu'avec tous les ordres de gouvernement, afin d'évaluer les risques et de tenir la population canadienne informée des mesures que nous pouvons tous prendre pour demeurer en santé et protéger les personnes les plus vulnérables. Merci.
Merci beaucoup. Guys, you know the drill. One question, one follow-up. Um, on va commencer avec David de Retars. Question, I think, first off for Dr. Sorry, I apologize. Question for Dr. Tam. The situation in the state seems to be developing quite rapidly. You have a lot of people from Quebec coming back last week from March break in the States. Next week is March break in Ontario. Undoubtedly, a lot of people will be going to the States. At what point, given what's happening down south, do you think about a travel advisory? Perhaps against parts of the states. Well, we continue to monitor the situation, um, you know, on a very much an ongoing basis. Right now, um, if you look at our advice, it would include all the areas in the United States that are currently experiencing cases as well. So as I've just said, that all travelers, no matter where they come from, including the United States, um, should be aware of this kind of information, on, uh, which is linked to our website. And as I've said, that everyone who comes back into Canada should self-monitor for symptoms. And Minister Champagne, there's no doubt that if Canada did issue a travel advisory warning against travel to certain parts of the states, that would upset the White House. How complicated is it for your relationship with the states to have a potentially unhappy President Trump when you're, when you're working through these issues? Well, let me be clear. I mean, uh, it's science first. And from day one in Canada, thanks to Dr. Tam and Minister Haidu and the whole of government, we have been guided by science. We have been guided by the World Health Organization advisory, and we're continuing to work with our five vice partner. Uh, in the case of the Grand Princess, as you could see, we have been in touch with our U.S. Uh, colleagues uh, to make sure that not only we protect the health and safety of Canadians, both at home and abroad, but we also are mindful of how we can protect protect uh, North America uh, from the spread of the virus. So I would say our relationship and our interaction is, is going well. It's, it's almost daily at all level of governments to make sure that we protect the safety of all Canadians. Uh, I'd like to mention the problems we are having with the microphone. Uh, Thank you. Good morning, Pourquoi avoir Champagne. attendu aussi longtemps Why Je sais que c'est plus Dr. Long. Tam, mais pourquoi avoir attendu aussi longtemps avant de donner un avis sur les croisières Parce que ça fait des semaines que le gros problème de croisières ont été dans notre face, au large du Japon. Alors pourquoi tout ce temps-là avant de dire aux gens « allez en croisière » D'abord, je vais laisser la Dr. Tam peut-être vous répondre plus précisément, mais là-dessus, je pense que le Canada, avec les autorités américaines depuis le début du coronavirus, nous sommes en contact régulier avec aussi nos partenaires à l'étranger, si vous regardez notre réponse, que ce soit be it with the Diamond Princess and today with the Grand Princess, Canadian authorities have been working closely with American authorities. We are the country together with the American authorities that have taken the first measures to ensure that this embarkation of Canadians is done very quickly. The plane repatriating Canadians will leaving based on the around 9 p.m. to arrive for Trenton around 5. 15 in the morning, so this, um, this embarkation will be done at the same time as the American authorities. So Canada is at the forefront of the global response to protect Canadians, not only here, but abroad as well. I'll allow my colleagues, Dr. Tam, Minister Haidu, to add something. Why, why did it take so long before giving advice against cruise ship travel? Because we saw what happened in that cruise ship in Japan. It's been weeks. So why just today? Well, I think we provide advice to all travelers, no matter what setting. But as you know, that the global situation changed quite rapidly, even from the time of the Diamond Princess cruise ship to now. Uh, many more countries are now affected, whereas at that point in time, there was not as many. Uh, but we always have to learn continuously from the experiences uh, that have taken place, including that of the Diamond Princess, which is why I think the moment that uh, something uh, was noted in terms of cases on this particular cruise ship, um, international communities acted uh, rapidly. Um, so I think um, it's really a constant learning from um, the very rapidly evolving situation. And I think that this is a precautionary measure that we um, absolutely support from a public health perspective. Joyce, 
<laughs> Thank you. About the passengers on that on the latest ship, you said that those who present symptoms will remain in the States and be treated in the United States. So do you know if they're going to a military base in quarantine? Is it a civilian hospital? And what kind of agreement do you have with the Americans? How many days will they keep them there? How will they be treated? Do you have specific agreements with the U.S. about that? So, um, yeah, so in terms of uh, passengers that are currently symptomatic, those passengers will not be allowed to board this plane. We're working with the U.S. authorities right now to determine um, the severity of illness that people might be experiencing, whether or not they can isolate, uh, self-isolate for 14 days uh, or longer, depending on their symptoms, how we'll, how we'll work through supporting those folks. And I know that Consular Services is working very closely with the individuals that are affected. Uh, and we'll have more to say as we work through those details with the Americans, but we have been very clear with our American partners that uh, we expect that those Canadians receive uh, the appropriate level of care and, of course, we'll be in touch with them uh, as well on the health side. And about, you know, Canada's critical care facilities. Um, so we know by covering federal, provincial uh, conferences, the provinces have told you in Mississauga lately that their health care system is in need of more funds from the federal government. So I'm wondering if our critical care facilities across the country are ready to receive, should there be an, a big outbreak in Canada? Do we have enough respirators? Do we have enough capacity or for testing or kits, testing kits or whatever it is that we do have? And do we have enough beds? Do we have enough people? Mm -hmm. Do you feel really confident that your healthcare system as it stands today will be able to handle this? So two parts to that question. I think it's very important that we don't confuse uh, the requests of provinces in terms of general health transfers uh, with what we are facing right now, which is the potential surge on demands. It is a significant difference. Uh, so, secondly, I think uh, it's important to know that this, these are the conversations we've been having, both through the health ministers and now with the prime minister and premier. We are very alive to the fact that prov some provinces are indicating that they have uh, they have deficits, and we are gathering that information. And we have said all along that we will be there as a federal government to support them with the resources they need, whether those are financial resources or practical resources. You mentioned kits, uh, uh, personal protective equipment. Ventilators. Dr. Tam can speak a little bit about the components of the testing kits. So we are in the process right now of ensuring that we understand where those potential deficits will be from uh, province to province. And we obviously have supply on hand of some of the materials and are doing the assessment right now with provinces in terms of what their particular needs are as it relates to a surge in capacity uh, related to COVID-19. Did you want to add anything, Dr. Tam? Um, we have a federal, provincial, territorial special advisory committee on COVID-19, and as part of that, the discussions there, um, we facilitate and coordinate um, discussions on supplies uh, from the province and territories, including laboratory uh, networks as well. So all provincial laboratories are connected together with our National Microbiology Lab, and they have not indicated any uh, issues with supplies right now. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't proactively plan uh, for what the escalations um, are uh, up, up and coming. So this is a very sort of ongoing, uh, ongoing assessment uh, in terms of supply requirements. Uh, but as you've seen, provinces have done uh, an incredible job in expanding their testing uh, in Canada. Thank you, Louis Blouin, and then Christy Krupa. Uh, en français, quel est, est-ce que en fait le niveau de préparation en termes de santé publique est égal d'une province à l'autre Et est-ce qu'il y a des provinces qui euh, vous ont exprimé des besoins particuliers Peut-être Monsieur Champagne, j'aimerais ça vous entendre là-dessus. Uh, in English, I'd like to know if the level of preparedness from a province to the other is the same at this point, and was there any requests that were made by the provinces at this time 
Yeah, listen, I, th that is underway right now, and uh, I have a regular weekly meeting with my counterparts, health ministers, and th this is a standing item on our agenda. We've also, I've also sent out formal letters, as you know, to the provinces and territories to let them know that we are here for them and that we are preparing federally uh, in terms of what our anticipated uh, demands might be, and also to advise uh, me in terms of what other needs they have. Um, as, as Dr. Tam mentioned, this is happening uh, at the technical level as well, and I know that the Prime Minister has written to the Premiers and has uh, reminded them that this is going to be very useful information. Um, as, a, as of this time, uh, provinces and health ministers have said that they are grateful for that support, that they feel confident that the federal government will be there to support them if they see an anticipate, uh, unanticipated surge or if they have uh, specific challenges around uh, needs that they may feel that they have a deficit of. Howard, did you want to answer that in French? Just no, we're okay. Uh, <laughs> Alicia, um, um, technique. Uh, Looking at the technical level, we continue working closely with our counterparts in the provinces and territories. As Dr. Tam said, a, a special advisory committee has been set up with the various public health officers in the provinces and territories. So far, we've had very good discussions. No province has pointed out that they lack capacity for handling any issue. So we are continuing our conversations, and it's evolving, and if there's any problem, the the federal government will be able to support the provinces and territories. Uh, answer. I think uh, what I'd like to tell Canadians is that your officials and your politicians are working incredibly hard to be ready should we see a surge in any community. This is uh, uh, top of priority for all governments, including local governments. And so I want to thank all of those professionals and the leaders, the political leaders, that are taking this so seriously and doing that hard work. Um, this is the work that has to happen, undoubtedly, and it is happening, and Canadians can uh, be assured that the people that are in charge of these various health systems are uh, extremely hardworking and working very diligently to determine uh, their capacity and their readiness. Customs officers have asked for more support and more education to be able to handle this crisis. Have any measures been taken to reassure customs officers in Canada? To respond to your first question, we are doing that at all levels. Minister Haidu said so I spoke to Mr. Giroux when we talked about repatriating Canadians on the Grand Princess. What Minister Haidu and Dr. Tam were saying is that it's happening at various levels, at a political level, at the level of the officials, at all levels of government, because right now we need a response at federal and provincial and even municipal level to make sure that we are there. To respond to your question about customs officers, yes, we are looking into the measures we could implement. This is an evolving situation. As you can imagine, we are continuing discussions to find out the best possible measures. When we talk about ensuring the health and safety of Canadians, we are talking about all Canadians, of course, those on the front lines, those who offer services for repatriating Canadians or offering medical services. These are part of the discussions we are having now with various authorities and with the various agencies that have a role to play. Christy and then Marie Vastel, and we have some 10 minutes left. So please, short questions uh, good morning, and answers. Christy Kirkup with the Globe and Mail. You mentioned off the top that uh, the travel advisory, specifically to the United States, that there's no no plan change there. Can you just help us to understand why that is? Is it because COVID-19 knows no borders, and is that kind of part of the approach that you're giving the the public health advice? Um, because you know, th this can, can go anywhere at this point. Well, our travel health uh, advice or travel health notice is based on the existing data. So, of course, we will be monitoring every part of the United States like we would any part of the world. And But we will... Um, our advice would be focused on specific area of the United States as opposed to the whole of the United States. That that would be the most uh, appropriate approach. So right now, none of them are at an increased level of travel health advisory, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. It's just that it's right now. I mean, if you, you can't compare, you know, maybe um, another country with much higher cases than what is happening in the United States, but uh, we are taking the precautionary approach to warn all travelers, as I've just said. 
And Dr. Tam, I heard what you said on Friday that people should think twice about getting on a cruise ship. Today you're saying public health agency is, you're, you know, kind of going further to warn Canadians against cruise ship uh, travel. Uh, the government obviously announcing this weekend uh, you're repatriating Canadians that are, are stuck on the Grand Princess. Um, if Canadians decide uh, to maybe not take the advice of the public health agency, are you still going to order up a plane and, and to go get those Canadians? What's the policy uh, in place specifically around also taxpayers are involved in um, dealing with this very sensitive situation? Now that the advice has been issued to not go on cruise ships, are you still going to go and, and get them if, if they're in a situation where they need some help? Well, first of all, let me be very clear for all of those watching at home. Um, this is going to be done on a cost recovery basis. So I have talked to the CEO of Allen America, and we have agreed that, that the cruise line uh, will be will be assuming the costs of the plane to repatriate Canadians. So this is done on a cost recovery basis, and the cost will be borne by the cruise line. Uh, in the case that we have, obviously, as people watching at home, we have to look at the situation case by case. This is a very exceptional circumstances. First of all, uh, we have a specific request from the United States government. Uh, we are dealing in a cruise ship environment, and everything we have learned, as Dr. Tam said so far, suggests that we take measures which are exceptional. And we're also acting to prevent the spread of the virus in North America. So these circumstances have led us, obviously, to take a specific set of actions. Um, if you compare the case what's going on in Italy, for example, in Iran, there is still a number of commercial means for Canadians to get out of these regional areas where obviously there's an outbreak of the uh, coronavirus. But you're quite right to say that as we have said to Canadians now, that the advice from the Public Health Agency of Canada and Minister Aydou and the whole of government is for Canadians to avoid travel on cruise ship. Uh, people would be on notice, obviously, of the danger associated with getting into a cruise line at this stage. And therefore, we will look at cases um, on, on a case-by-case -case basis because all of them depend. But I would say on this one, there were a number of exceptional circumstances which have led us to work with the U.S. authority uh, to secure a plane. and this is being done on a cost recovery basis in accordance with our discussions with the cruise line. Marie, sur les coûts. No, 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 Marie. It's not very clear in my mind. If I understand your response well, Minister Champagne, you are saying people will be notified that they are not supposed to go on cruise ships. Do you mean that from now, if people go on board a cruise ship, it's at their own risk and they will have to use their own costs? This. But on the quarantine in the U.S., uh, who is paying for medical treatment in the U.S. for those people? Would it have to be their own insurance? Is it the U.S. or is it the Canadian government? Uh, Regarding the first part of your question, I believe I said that common sense should apply, particularly since the Canadian government is warning Canadians to be very careful before they board a cruise ship. I believe people watching us at home understand that we are giving a formal advisory that it's not in anyone's interest to travel concerning repatriation of those on the Grand Princess. It will be done on a cost recovery basis. The plane being uh, hired would be paid for by the cruise ship. They, are, they have committed to cover the cost of the plane. These, we are faced with exceptional services, a formal request from the American government asking us to repatriate Canadians on board the ship. Secondly, this was a cruise ship environment, and as Dr. Cham said, these were exceptional circumstances. And thirdly, we acted to prevent the spread of the virus in North America. That being said, we shall continue looking at situations on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, but I believe that Canadians are now notified they should reconsider their travel trips if they include cruise, cruises. symptomatic that can't travel, uh, first I will say that every situation will be different, and we're assessing right now what people's personal situations are, how ill they are, whether or not they will need to be hospitalized, whether or not they will be able to self-isolate, uh, you know, potentially in, an, in, in a hotel 
tell. Um, but I will remind Canadians that when they travel and adverse events happen, that, that is why we have things like travel insurance and other kinds of um, precautions that we put into place when we travel because unanticipated events can happen regardless of whether it's an illness or other kinds of events. Obviously, uh, the consular services will work with each particular individual to assess their their circumstances, but uh, our anticipation is that uh, those individuals will have to, um, you know, work with the consular services and um, and hopefully draw on the resources that they have uh, put into place as travelers. And my other uh, question is sort of a technical question. Maybe it's for you, Minister Haidu. In in a situation where the it would become a, a, an epidemic. Where is the um, jurisdiction, is it federal or provincial, to decide if there were to be a quarantine for a city or for an area? So I'll answer briefly and then I'll turn to Dr. Tam. Uh, we work very closely with provinces and territories and local municipalities to help them do risk assessments in terms of the kinds of social distancing measures that they'll take, including the potential of quarantine or uh, cancellation of events, for example. We now have, uh, we've had obviously documents that are available to all provinces, but there's a link now on our website on the front page that uh, includes access to the risk assessment tool that local communities can use if they're considering cancelling events or closing down public spaces. But that is uh, largely in, uh, at the, the discretion of the jurisdiction in, in which uh, the, the event is being held, so whether it's at a local level or provincial level. And I'll turn to Dr. Tam to just add a few words about that. No, that's correct. I think at the um, federal level and the public health agency, we provide uh, guidance and technical uh, support. Um, but every level of government have their own acts, public health laws laws which allow um, them to enact uh, any number of these range of public health measures. And it is important, I think, that you do uh, look at the situation from the ground up. Um, and the, the measures have to be balanced against what's going on on the ground, and you can't sort of blanket a whole geographic area um, for, with, without um, really paying attention to the d details on the ground. So I think the key is that at the local level, they need to understand their s epidemiologic situation, if you like, and then act according to that data. Um, Apologies for those who have not had the opportunity to ask their own questions. Ministers had commitments, uh, have other commitments to, to attend to after the press briefing. I'll urge them to do that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'll make sure that that happens. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.